Chapter 19, The Exact. Next morning, when the first light came into the sky and the sparrows stirred in the trees, when the cows rattled their chains and the roosters crowed and the early automobiles went whispering along the road, Wilbur awoke and looked for Charlotte. He saw her up overhead in the corner near the back of his pen. She was very quiet. Her eight legs were spread wide. She seemed to have shrunk during the night. Next to her, attached to the ceiling, Wilbur saw a curious object. It was sort of a sack or cocoon. It was peach colored and looked as though it were made of cotton candy. Are you awake, Charlotte? He said softly. Yes, came the answer. What's that nifty little thing? Did you make it? I did indeed, replied Charlotte in a weak voice. Is it a plaything? Plaything? I should say not. It's my egg sack, my magnum opus. I don't know what a magnum opus is, said Wilbur. That's Latin, exclaimed Charlotte. It means great work. This egg sack is my great work, the finest thing I have ever made. What's inside it? asked Wilbur. Eggs? Five hundred and fourteen of them, she replied. Five hundred and fourteen, said Wilbur. You're kidding. No, I'm not. I counted them. I got started counting. I got started counting, so I kept on, just to keep my mind occupied. It's a perfectly beautiful egg sack, said Wilbur, feeling as happy as though he had constructed it himself. Yes, it is pretty, replied Charlotte, patting the sack with one of her two front legs. Anyway, I can guarantee that it is strong. It's made out of the toughest material I have. It's also waterproof. The eggs are inside and will be warm and dry. Charlotte, said Wilbur dreamily, are you really going to have 514 children? If nothing happens, yes, she said. Of course, they won't show up till next spring. Wilbur noticed that Charlotte's voice sounded sad. What makes you sound so downhearted? I should think you'd be terribly happy about this. <sighs> oh, don't pay any attention to me, said Charlotte. I just don't have much pep anymore. I guess I feel sad because I won't ever see my children. What do you mean you won't see your children? Of course you will. We'll all see them. It's going to be simply wonderful. Next spring, spring in the barn cellar with 514 baby spiders running around all over the place. And the geese will have a new set of goslings. And the sheep will have their new lambs. Maybe, said Charlotte quietly. However, I have a feeling I'm not going to see the rest, the results of last night's efforts. I don't feel good at all. I think I'm languishing, to tell you the truth. Wilbur didn't understand the word languish, and he hated to bother Charlotte by asking her to explain. He was so worried he felt he had to ask. What does languishing mean? It means I'm slowing up, feeling my age. I'm not young anymore, Wilbur. But I don't want you to worry about me. This is your big day today. Look at my web. Doesn't it show up well with the dew on it? Charlotte's web never looked more beautiful than it looked this morning. Each strand held dozens of bright drops of early morning dew. The light of the east struck it and made it all plain and clear. It was a perfect piece of designing and building. In another hour or two, a steady stream of people would pass by, admiring it and reading it and looking at Wilbur and marveling at the miracle. As Wilbur was studying the web, a pair of whiskers and a sharp face appeared. Slowly, Templeton dragged himself across the pen and threw himself down in the corner. I'm back, he said in a husky voice. What a night. The rat was swollen to twice his normal size. His stomach was as big around as a jelly jar. What a night, he repeated hoarsely. What feasting and carousing. A real gorge. I must have eaten the remains of 30 lunches. Never have I seen such leavings and everything well ripened and seasoned with the passage of time and the heat of the day. Oh, it was rich, my friends, rich. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, said Charlotte in disgust. I would, it would serve you right if you had an acute attack of the indigestion. Don't worry about my stomach, snarled Templeton. I can handle anything. And by the way, I've got some bad news. As I came past the pig next door, the one that called himself uncle, I noticed a blue tag on the front of his pen. That means he has won first prize. I guess you're licked, Wilbur. You may as well relax. Nobody is going to hang 
at any meddle on you. Furthermore, wouldn't be surprised if Zuckerman changes his mind about you. Wait till he gets hankering for some fresh pork chops and smoked ham and crisp bacon. He'll take the knife to you, my boy. Be still, Templeton, said Charlotte. You're too stuffed and bloated to know what you're saying. Don't pay any attention to him, Wilbur. Wilbur tried not to think about what the rat had just said. He decided to change the subject. Templeton, said Wilbur, if you weren't so dopey, you would have noticed that Charlotte has made an egg sack. She's going to become a mother. For your information, there are 514 eggs in that peachy little sack. Is that true? asked the rat, eyeing the sack suspiciously. Yes, it's true, sighed Charlotte. Congratulations, murmured Templeton. This has been a night. He closed his eyes, pulled some straw over himself, and dropped off into deep sleep. Wilbur and Charlotte were glad to be rid of him for a while. At nine o'clock, Mr. Arable's truck rolled into the fairgrounds and came to a stop at Wilbur's pen. Everybody climbed out. Look, cried Fern. Look at Charlotte's web. Look what it says. The grown-ups and the children joined hand, joined hands and stood there studying the new sign. Humble, said Mr. Zuckerman. Now, isn't that just the word for it, Wilbur? Everyone rejoiced to find that the miracle of the web had been repeated. Wilbur gazed up lovingly into their faces. He looked very humble and very grateful. Fern winked at Charlotte. Lurvy soon got busy. He poured a bucket of warm slops into the trough, and while Wilbur ate his breakfast, Lurvy scratched him gently with a smooth stick. Wait a minute, cried Avery. Look at this. He pointed to the blue tag on Uncle's pen. This pig has won first prize already. The Zuckermans and the Arabils stared at the tag. Mrs. Zuckerman began to cry. Nobody said a word. They just stared at the tag. Then they stared at Uncle. Then they stared at the tag again. Lurvy took out an enormous handkerchief and blew his nose very loudly, so loud, in fact, that the noise was heard by the stable boys over in the horse barn. Can I have some money? asked Fern. I want to go to the midway. You stay right where you are, said her mother. Tears came to Fern's eyes. What's everybody crying about? asked Mr. Zuckerman. Let's get busy. Edith, bring the buttermilk. Mrs. Zuckerman wiped her eyes with her handkerchief. She went to the truck and came back with a gallon jar of buttermilk. Bath time, said Zuckerman cheerfully. He and Mrs. Zuckerman and Avery climbed into Wilbur's pen. Avery slowly poured milk, buttermilk on Wilbur's head and back, and as it trickled down his sides and cheeks, Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman rubbed it into his hair and skin. Passers-by stopped to watch. Pretty soon, a crowd had gathered. Wilbur grew beautifully white and smooth. The morning sun shone through his pink ears. He isn't as big as that pig next door, remarked one bystander, but he's cleaner. That's what I like. So do I, said another man. He's humble, too, said the woman reading the sign in the web. Everybody who visited the pig pen had a good word to say about Wilbur. Everyone admired the web, and of course, nobody noticed Charlotte. Suddenly, a voice was heard on the loudspeaker. Attention, please, it said. Will Mr. Homer Zuckerman bring his famous pig to the judge's booth in front of the grandstand? A special war award will be made there in 20 minutes. Everyone is invited to attend. Crate your pig, please, Mr. Zuckerman, and report to the judge's booth promptly. For a moment after this announcement, the Arables and the Zuckermans were unable to speak or move. Then Avery picked up a handful of straw and threw it high in the air and gave a loud yell. The straw fluttered down like confetti into Fern's hair. Mr. Zuckerman hugged Mrs. Zuckerman. Mr. Arable kissed Mrs. Arable. Avery kissed Wilbur. Lurvy shook hands with everybody. Fern hugged her mother. Avery hugged Fern. Mrs. Arable hugged Mrs. Zuckerman. Up overhead in the shadows of the ceiling, Charlotte crouched unseen, her front legs encircling her egg sack. Her heart was not beating as strongly as usual, and she felt very weary and old. But she was sure at last that she had saved Wilbur's life. She felt peaceful and contented. We have no time to lose, shouted Mr. Zuckerman. Larvy, help me with the crate. Can I have some money? asked Fern. You wait, said Mrs. Arable. Can't you see everybody is busy? Put that empty buttermilk jar into the truck, commanded Mr. Arable. Avery grabbed the jar and rushed to the truck. Does my hair look all right? asked Mrs. Zuckerman. Looks fine, snapped Mr. Zuckerman as he and Lurvy set the crate down in front of Wilbur. You didn't even look at my hair, said Mrs. Zuckerman. You're all right, Edith, said Mrs. Arable. Just keep calm. 
Templeton, asleep in the straw, heard the commotion and awoke. He didn't know exactly what was going on, but he... But when he saw what the men were shoving Wilbur into the crate, he made up his mind to go along. He watched his chance, and when no one was looking, he crept into the crate and buried himself in the straw at the bottom. All ready, boys, cried Mr. Zuckerman. Let's go! Mr. Uh, he and Mr. Arable and Larvy and Avery grabbed the crate and boosted it over the side of the pen and up into the trunk. Fern jumped aboard <coughs> and sat on top of the crate. She still had straw in her hair and looked very pretty and excited. Mr. Arable started the, started the motor. Everyone climbed in, and off they drove to the judge's booth in front of the grandstand. As they passed the Ferris wheel, Fern gazed up, at the, gazed up at it and wished that she were at the topmost car with Henry Fussy. Chapter 20, The Hour of Triumph. Special announcement, said the loudspeaker in a pompous voice. The management of the fair takes great pleasure in presenting Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman and his famous pig. The truck bearing this extraordinary animal is now approaching the infield. Kindly stand back and give the truck room to proceed. In a few moments, the pig will be unloaded in the special judging ring in front of the grandstand, where a special award will be made. Will the crowd please make way and let the truck pass? Thank you. Wilbur trembled when he heard his spe this speech. He felt happy but dizzy. The truck crept along slowly at low speeds. Crowds of people surrounded it, and Mr. Arable had to drive very carefully in order not to run over everybody. At last, he managed to reach the judge's stand. Avery jumped out and lowered the tailgate. I'm scared to death, whispered Mrs. Zuckerman. Hundreds of people are looking at us. Cheer up, replied Mrs. Arable. This is fun. Unload your pig, please, said the loudspeaker. All together now, boys, said Mr. Zuckerman. Several men stepped forward from the crowd to help lift the crate. Avery was the busiest helper of, of all. Tuck your shirt in, Avery, cried Mrs. Zuckerman, and tighten your belt. Your pants are coming down. Can't you see I'm busy, replied Avery in disgust. Look, cried Fern, pointing. There's Henry. Don't shout, Fern, said her mother, and don't point. Can't I please have some money, said Fern. Henry invited me to go to the Ferris wheel again, only I don't think he has any money left. He ran out of money. Mrs. Arable opened her handbag. Here, she said, here is 40 cents. Now don't you get lost and be back at our regular meeting place by the pig pen very soon. Fern raced off, ducking and dodging through the crowd in search of Henry. The Zuckerman pig is now being taken from his crate, boomed the vo voice on the loudspeaker. Stand by for an announcement. Templeton crouched under the straw at the bottom of the crate. What a lot of nonsense, muttered the rat. What a lot of fuss about nothing. Over in the pig pen, silent and alone, Charlotte rested. Her two front legs embraced the egg sack. Charlotte could hear everything that was said in the loudspeaker. The words gave her courage. This was her hour of triumph. As Wilbur came out of the crate, the cl crowd clapped and cheered. Mr. Zuckerman looked, took off his cap and bowed. Lurvy pulled his big handkerchief from his pocket and wiped the sweat from the back of his neck. Avery knelt in the dirt by Wilbur's side, busily stroking him and showing off. Mr. Zuckerman and Mrs. Arable stood in the running board stood on the running board of the truck. Ladies and gentlemen, said the loudspeaker, we now present Mr. Homer L. Zuckerman, distinguished pig. The fame of this unique animal has spread to the far corners of the earth, attracting many valuable tourists to our great state. Many of you will recall that never-to-be-forgotten day last summer when the writing appeared mysteriously on the spider's web in Mr. Zuckerman's barn, calling the attention of all and sundry to the fact that this pig was completely out of the ordinary. This miracle has never been fully explained, although learned men have visited the Zuckerman pig pen to study and observe the phenomenon. In the last analysis, we simply know that we are dealing with supernatural forces here, and we should all feel proud and grateful. In the words of the spider web, ladies and gentlemen, this is some pig. Wilbur blushed. He stood perfectly still and tried to look his best. This magnificent animal, continued the loudspeaker, is truly terrific. Look at him, ladies and gentlemen. Note the smoothness and whiteness of the coat. Observe the spotless skin, the healthy pink glow of ears and snout. It's the buttermilk, whispered Mrs. Arable to Mrs. Zuckerman. 
Note the gentle, the general radiance of this animal. Then remember the day when the word radiant appeared clearly on the web. Whence came this mysterious writing? Not from the spider, we can rest assured of that. Spiders are very clever at weaving their webs, but needless to say, spiders cannot write. Oh, they can't, can they? murmured Charlotte to herself. Ladies and gentlemen, continued the loudspeaker, I must not take any more of your valuable time. On behalf of the governors of the fair, I have the honor of awarding a special prize of $25 to Mr. Zuckerman, together with a handsome bronze medal suitably engraved in token of our appreciation of the part played by this pig, this radiant, this terrific, this humble pig, in attracting so many visitors to our great county fair. Wilbur had been feeling dizzier and dizzier though this through this long complimentary speech. When he heard the crowd begin to cheer and clap, he suddenly fainted away. His legs collapsed, his mind went blank, and he fell to the ground unconscious. What's wrong? asked the loudspeaker. What's going on, Mr. Zuckerman? What's the trouble with your pig? Avery was kneeling by Wilbur's head, stroking him. Mr. Zuckerman was dancing around, fanning him with his cap. He's all right, cried Mr. Zuckerman. He gets these spells. He's modest and can't stand praise. Well, we can't give a prize to a dead pig, said the loudspeaker. It's never been done. He isn't dead, hollered Zuckerman. He's fainted. He gets embarrassed easily. Run for some water, Lurvy. Lurvy sprang for the judge's ring and disappeared. Templeton poked his head from the straw. He noticed the end of Wilbur's tail was within reach. Templeton grinned. I'll tend to this, he chuckled. He took Wilbur's tail in his mouth and bit it just as hard as he could bite. The pain revived Wilbur in a flash. He was back on his feet. Ouch! she screamed. Hooray! yelled the crowd. He's up! The pig is up! Good work, Zuckerman! That's some pig! Everyone was delighted. Mr. Zuckerman was the most pleased of all. He sighed with relief. Nobody had seen Templeton. The rat had done his work well. And now one of the judges climbed into the ring with a prize. He handed Mr. Zuckerman two $10 bills and a $5 bill. And then he tied the medal around Wilbur's neck. And then he shook hands with Mr. Zuckerman and while Wilbur blushed. Avery put out his hand, and the judge shook hands with him, too. The crowd cheered. The photographer took Wilbur's picture. A great feeling of happiness swept over the Zuckermans and the Arables. This was the greatest moment in Mr. Zuckerman's life. It is deeply satisfying to win a prize in front of a lot of people. As Wilbur was being shoved back into the crate, Lurvy came charging through the crowd, carrying a pail of water. His eyes had a wild look. Without hesitating in seconds, he, a second, he dashed the water at Wilbur. In his amazement, he missed his aim, and the water splashed all over Mr. Zuckerman and Avery. They got soaking wet. For goodness sake, bellowed Mr. Zuckerman, who was really drenched. What ails you, Lurvy? Can't you see the pig is all right? You asked for water, said Lurvy meekly. I didn't ask for a shower bath, said Mr. Zuckerman. The crowd roared with laughter. Finally, Mr. Zuckerman had to laugh too, and of course, a very it was very tick. Avery was very tickled to find himself so wet, and he immediately started to act like a clown. He pretended he was taking a shower bath. He made faces and danced around and rubbed imaginary soap under his armpits, and then he dried himself with an imaginary towel. Avery, stop it! Cried his mother. Stop showing off! But the crowd loved it. Avery heard nothing but the applause. He liked being a clown in the ring and with everybody watching in front of the grandstand. When he discovered there was still a little water left in the bottom of the pail, he raised the pail high in the air and dumped the water on himself and made faces. The children in the grandstand screamed with appreciation. At last, things calmed down. Wilbur was loaded into the truck. Avery was led from the ring by his mother and placed in the car of the truck to dry off the seat of the truck to dry off. The truck, driven by Mr. Arable, crawled slowly back to the pig pen. Avery's wet trousers made a big wet spot on the seat.